Hello everyone. So in this video today we will talk about UV spectrophotometer. Last in the series we were talking about uh, what does ultraviolet spectroscopy mean? What are the different transitions? What is Lambert Beer law? But this all go in way if we don't know how does a spectrophotometer work. So today I will explain you spectrophotometer in detail. Uh, Basically, spectrophotometer is that instrument which is used to measure the spectrum of the compound. So, if we want to know the ultraviolet spectrum of the compound, the instrument which we are going to use would be spectrometer or spectrophotometer. So, this is basically the name of the apparatus which we are going to use. Now, there are certain uh, main components of this spectrophotometer. First one is definitely the light source. Obviously, a uh, light will fall on the sample, so you have to have a light, there will be some interaction with the sample and whatever comes out of it, you have to detect it. So in the UV spectrophotometer, there has to be two, three sections. Obviously, the first one is light source. So where are you going to get that light? For that, we use different type of lamps. Deuterium and hydrogen lamps normally cover this range, so they don't cover the visible range. Uh, tungsten filament lamp covers the entire range and xenon arc lamp also is used. But normally what happens is uh, deuterium and xenon arc lamps are not normally used at higher uh, wavelength because what happens is the oxidation, the ionization of oxygen and generation of ozone. So that is a problematic thing. And also, uh, a very high voltage is required to start up that uh, arc lamp xenon and that is why you need to have an insulation molecule also. So normally what uh, we use as a light source is tungsten filament, tungsten iodine or tungsten halogen lamp uh, uh, mixed with a deuterium lamp. So both of the sources are used to cover the wide range like UV range also and the visible range also. This is about light source. Now coming to what is next is sample obviously. So how are you going to keep the sample? You have to keep the sample uh, in any right? So we will hold it. Now we will hold it in hold karenge? So that container is known as cubit. What do we call it as? Cubit. Cubit is a cylinder type. Right? It could be of plastic, glass or quartz. Normally, Quartz is used because it is transparent in the following range, pura UV visible range mein, aap isko easily use kar sakte ho. But plastic or glass are only suitable for visible range. They do absorb UV range, so you cannot use them. So normally, quartz cubit is used. What is a cubit? Is a cylinder like this, in which you have to fill the sample. And these two sides, which are opposite sides are transparent to UV light and these two sides are opaque to the UV light. So we have to keep it in the spectrophotometer such that the light is passing through here. Inside you have to fill the sample, it will interact with the sample and it will go out of the cube. Coming to, basically there are two types of spectrophotometer. First one is a single beam and the second one is a double beam. Single beam is quite old version of a spectrophotometer. You can see the picture also. You may uh, make out from the picture that it is quite old apparatus. What happens here is you have to keep a source through which you are going to fall the light. Now we have to use entrance slit so that the light gets entered in the apparatus properly. For polychromatic light should go in a monochromatic light variation. A single direction will pass. So Right? Then you have a dispersion device. Now it could be prism, it could be grating device. What is the role of dispersion device? It is going to extract that light in different different wavelengths. So the light is going to disperse like this and then the exit slit will allow only one wavelength at a time to pass through it. So in the sample, which you call it as, what do you call it as? Cubic. Right, so in this cubit, we have taken the sample. Now, this light will fall one wavelength at a time, and then the sample is going to interact with the light. Whatever happens in the sample would be absorption of light. Now, the light which goes outside cubit would be transmitted light, and with the help of detector, you're going to exactly find out 
how much light is got uh, getting transmitted or basically what is the absorbance of this solution so single beam spectrophotometer is quite simple uh, to understand that uh, there are basic uh, components to it first obviously would be the light source kyunki hame ek light chahiye to wo source bhi aapko use karna padega so you are going to use a arc lamp here then you need a entrance slit because you need to diverge the light in a one direction so it has to be a monochromatic light so this will help you in that then you need a dispersion device because you have to scatter the light in the different uh, wavelengths right with your aapko yaad hoga hai na to ye wavelength mein scatter ho jayega ab एक वेवलेंथ एट अ टाइम जाएगी सैंपल में तभी हम एब्जॉर्बेंस पता लगा पाएंगे वर्सेस वेवलेंथ दैट व्हिच वेवलेंथ इज गेटिंग एब्जॉर्ब राइट सो एट अ पर्टिकुलर वेवलेंथ सो द रोल ऑफ एग्जिट स्लिट इज टू अलाउ वन वेवलेंथ एट अ टाइम एंड देन डिटेक्टर विल डिटेक्ट द थिंग नाउ कमिंग टू द डबल बी डबल बी में थोड़ा सा काम बढ़ जाता है आपका बिकॉज़ एज़ यू सेड इट इज डबल बी सो यू हैव टू यूज अ बीम स्प्लिटर beam splitter and this monochromatic device they basically send the separate beam to the cell because you have two cell now so you have to split the beam into two so a beam uh, splitter is extra then there is mirror this is also is uh, extra because it is going to diverge the light to the respective area here also slit will be there so uh, let us go uh, to the diagram how uh, is going to help you so if in a nutshell you may say that double beam spectrophotometer looks like this currently nowadays people use this only now here also you will be having a uv visible source then a monochromator uh, would be there the role of monochromator is is to make the light monochromatic so jo light polychromatic hogi usko monochromatic banane ka kaam yahan ho jayega and then it will go to the prism why the prism prism is obviously uh, used to grate right grating device or a prism is uh, we are going to use so that it, it splits the beam into different wavelengths now you have to use a beam splitter beam splitter is going to split the beam into equal half into equal half so the beam which is coming here the single wavelength which is coming here it will be split it into two half with the help of beam splitter now what are they they are mirrors what is the role of mirror mirror is going to converge the light on the required qubit so you are placing a mirror here and a here and they will diverge the light to the respective qubit now if you see it is a double beam because two beams are going to be uh, analyzed at a same time single beam mein kya ho raha tha ek hi beam ja rahi thi at a time लेकिन डबल बीम में दो बीम्स एक साथ जाएंगी और डिटेक्टर विल डिटेक्ट बोथ ऑफ देम टुगेदर कैसे हो रहा है ये इन दिस क्यूबेट यू विल प्लेस योर सैंपल इन दिस क्यूबेट यू विल प्लेस अ रेफरेंस नाउ व्हाट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड बाय रेफरेंस एंड सैंपल यस यू आर राइट सैंपल मींस द सॉल्यूशन फॉर व्हिच यू वांट टू नो द एब्जॉर्बेंस एंड रेफरेंस मींस यू हैव टू टेक अ रेफरेंस जिसके रिस्पेक्ट में आप ग्राफ बनाओ So let's say if you make a solution in water, then water has to be taken here as a reference because it's not going to absorb UV light. So now if you see incident light is I zero and the transmitted light is also same I Z because it's not going to absorb that light. Why here if you see the sample is there, incident light is I zero, but the transmitted light is I, right? So if uh, you uh, compare them together. detector will do that purpose for the comparison so at the end detector is going to tell you log of i0 by i which is like your transmitted light right absorbance so this will be absorbance and absorbance versus wavelength graph you will get at the end so this is very important here to select a reference because that will nullify the noises in the graph so that uh, portion will be done you have to do it with a blank and that is what known as reference then you have to keep a sample and then uh, in one of my videos i have discussed about lambert beer law and its application from where uh, you will be able to understand that absorbance versus concentration that is a very important funda here right transmittance versus absorbance and concentration so if you go with absorbance versus concentration also and it is a linear curve right so if we know 
known concentration we can plot the graph but by taking a unknown sample here by calculating the absorbance here we can simply extrapolate it to the concentration graph and we can extrapolate it to the axis and from there we can know the unknown concentration of the sample तो ये बहुत इजी हो जाता है कि पहले आप एक नोन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन के साथ में ना एब्जॉर्बेंस का ग्राफ बना लो वो आपने प्लॉट कर दिया अब आप क्या करोगे अब आप एक अननोन सैंपल ले लो हुज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज नॉट नोन टू यू एंड नाउ इफ यू कैलकुलेट द एब्जॉर्बेंस यूजिंग डिटेक्टर एंड यू प्लॉट दैट वेर जैसे इस ग्राफ में यहाँ आ रहा है तो आप उसको नीचे एक्स्ट्रापोलेट करके ले आओ आपको कॉन्सेंट्रेशन पता चल जाएगी तो दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड यूनिक फीचर नाउ कमिंग टू How are we going to differentiate or compare? So it is very simple. That here it is single beam. So the calibration has to be done with blank every time before measuring the absorbance. Because वो उतना run तो हमें minus करना पड़ेगा. Otherwise वो जो blank solution है उसकी भी कुछ peaks आएंगी interfere करें. While here the calibration is done only in beginning. और उसके बाद तो हम दोनों beams एक साथ ही लेते हैं. It measures the total amount of transmitted light reaching the detector. Well, it measures the percentage of light absorbed by the absorbance. Remember, uh, it was taking this, so it was taking a reference. So percentage of light absorbed or transmitted, right? So that is the difference. Then coming to the third, it's not possible to compare blank and sample together. Yes, because you have single beam. So first you have to run blank, then you have to run sample one by one. While here you can do one step comparison. Because the, you have two uh, qubits and two beams together. Here, radiant energy wavelength has to be adjusted every time. Yes, because it's quite difficult for the slit to do that. While here, in this scanning, can be done over a wide wavelength region. The monochromator beam splitter and mirror helps in doing that. Working on single beam is tedious and time-consuming. Definitely, uh, जब आपको एक एक दो दो बार सेम चीज रिपीट करनी पड़ेगी तो इट वुड बी टाइम कंज्यूमिंग वाइल वर्किंग ऑन डबल बीन इज फास्ट एंड नॉन टी सो बेसिकली इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कंपेयर दैम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू देयर एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस सो मेजर एडवांटेज ऑफ सिंगल बीम इज इट्स वेरी सिंपल इन कंस्ट्रक्शन ईजी टू यूज एंड क्वाइट चीप राइट बट एट द सेम टाइम एडवांटेजेस ऑफ डबल बीन facilitates rapid scanning over wide uh, wavelength region fluctuations are minimized and it gives the ratio of intensity of sample and reference simultaneous if you go in disadvantage single beam there is many fluctuations so that will affect the absorbance you don't get continuous spectrum and double beam obviously it's quite complicated and expensive while it was not uh, and it was quite cheap also so this is what you can say about spectrophotometer Now coming to how does a UV spectrum look like? Detector के बाद जो आपको graph मिलेगा वो कुछ इस तरीके का होगा and uh, absorbance basically is like log of I zero by I. Based on that this graph you have got. Now absorbance if you remember based on Lambert Weir law can be represented as that also. So if the longer path length is there, sample will cause more UV light to be absorbed. Similarly, if greater the concentration, more UV light will be absorbed. linear effect is there and also molar absorptivity is having very important role in it so let us go ahead with this only that molar absorptivity value also is going to affect how see l will remain constant because the qubit which you are taking right the distance uh, the path length would be either 1 cm throughout or if you take qubit of 2 cm then it would be 2 cm throughout so basically l would be remaining constant because qubit to aap ek hi le rahe ho na wo to aap bar bar change nahi kar rahe ho concentration typically you can vary and you know maybe you can make dilute and concentrated solution aur uh, jaisa maine bataya uv mein iska bahut importance hai because with the help of uv only we will be able to find out the unknown concentration ki mujhe ek random solution mil jaye aur mujhe uski concentration pata karni hai so we can go ahead with this matter however molar absorptivity value also uh, can give you some kind of information like if the value is very high so you can say that the absorption is very intense or if it is of less intensity then there are certain transitions which are not allowed they are forbidden but they are also sometimes expressed in uh, the spectrum so based on that uh, you can uh, figure out many things absorption basically is proportional to epsilon 
which is like your molar absorptivity coefficient so basically uv spectrum will look like this and you have to identify the lambda max from the peak so wherever you get a peak you just have to extrapolate it so you can see you are getting a peak at 206 which is given here 252 317 and 376 so normally the peaks are like this band because jaisa maine pehle bhi bataya tha transitions wale ek video mein maine aapko bataya hai that electronic transitions are there vibrational transitions are there and rotational transitions are there so if ultraviolet spectroscopy is all about electronic transition that means it will be subsided by the vibrational and rotational uh, transitions both so is tarike ka graph nahi aayega in fact ye sab cover karte hue bands bane because is electronic may vibrational or rotational transitions be include ho jayenge and that is why you call this spectroscopy as band spectroscopy also so i think with that aapko kafi kuch samajh mein aaya hai ultraviolet spectrophotometer ke bare mein thank you so much uh, next i'll bring a virtual lab on uh, lambert beer's law and a woodward fisher uh, rule uh, thank you so much uh, for liking the videos and uh, do keep subscribing the channel thank you so much